everybody and welcome to a new video so today i'm here to do my january wrap up and i haven't done a wrap up in like maybe a year maybe a little bit less i'm honestly not sure how long ago i last did one of these it has been a while so i'm a little bit out of practice so yeah i will try to remember my thoughts on these books because my brain does not retain information very well as soon as i read a book i pretty much forget the entire plot and everything that happened i am one of those people so i'm gonna try my best to remember my thoughts and hopefully i can convey them to you however some of these books it's been well over a month since i read them so we shall see how this will go okay so i have my goodreads up here so i can find out the books that i read because i kind of forgotten so i think in january i did a total of 15 books more than half of which was manga so yeah i did do quite well i would say in january with what i managed to read and i did read some really really good books so the first book that i did finish during the month of january was the fourth book in the zodiac academy series which is shadow princess so originally i planned to read a few of the zodiac academy books during january but after the pain that this put me through, I needed yet another break from this series. This is a series that definitely does put you through it emotionally. In this world, we basically have these two twins that we follow who are the long lost heirs to this throne and they are orphans and they are basically in a constant battle with the four celestial heirs who are the next in line to the throne of Solaria, which is where this takes place and obviously they kind of hate each other and we also have this kind of darkness in the shadows kind of thing going on as well um as well as like romance and all these different things it's a really really good series it has been compared to harry potter in the sense of like how there's houses and things and they're different creatures and i would say in a sense it is similar but it's definitely its own thing and if you do like a magical school and like really badass strong main characters and reverse harem romance definitely enemy lovers and bully romance there's a lot of bullying in these books and um, but also just a really really good plot a really good continuous world building then i would definitely recommend this series you guys have heard me talk about this series so many times you all know that i love it but i'm very slowly making my way through it but yeah this is the fourth book this is shadow princess Dead academy this is by caroline peckham and suzanne valenti so i did really enjoy this i read this at the start of the year and this is a chunky book i'm not gonna lie this is like 700 pages um i think i did give this five stars maybe it was four stars i was in pain that's all i know now is pain from this book this the way it ended just i knew it was gonna happen because i'd seen a spoiler but it still hit me just as bad nothing could have prepared me for the heartbreak that is this book i am kind of pissed at one of the characters at the moment but i think that's kind of the point and i'm interested to see how the story is going to develop but these books just get scarier like honestly every time you finish one and you're about to start the next one you get more and more scared because these authors know no bounds they do not care about your feelings they will destroy them and yeah i'm terrified of book five but i will be picking it up soon um but yeah i just really really enjoyed this book and i feel like in every single book in this series we get so much character development and the world continuously gets developed even more and i love the world in this series i just think it's so well done and i just love the kind of feeling of being on a campus but then also having these other things that get introduced in there and i also do love the humor of tori tori is just such a funny character to me and i just i'm obsessed with her. she's one of my favorite fictional characters now and don't even get me started on darius like oh darius is just i love him so much so yes this was such a good book to read and start the year off with because i honestly loved every second of it these books may look big but they are so fast to read because they are very very fast paced and i am just Oh, I miss this world. I really want to pick up book five again, which I might do. But yeah, this was just so good. So I highly recommend this series. Go check it out. The first book is not the best, but each book just gets better and better in my opinion. So yeah, I would highly recommend this. Absolutely loved it. Very, very happy I started my year off with this. If you did want to see a reading vlog of me reading this book, I will link it up here. I did read it in my first kind of reading vlog of the year. So you can hear my thoughts about that as well. So next, during a... 48 hour readathon i think it was or maybe it was 24 hour readathon can't remember but i'll also link the vlog for that here um i did read both of these books here so this is kingdom of stars and shadows and i also finished a kingdom of blood and betrayal by holly renee um i kind of bought these on a whim um very randomly i think they're on kindle limited this is a fantasy romance series and i will say there was interesting world building parts but this was nothing very new 
and yeah like I liked it but I didn't love it I think I gave both of these three stars they were really really entertaining really fun really quick easy reads but nothing that is very memorable nothing really that hasn't been done before like I said the only difference is like the world building we have like I think they're called star something I can't remember the exact phrasing let me see if i can see it i can't remember what the wording of it is but she's like star kissed or something like she has this like thing all over her and then we have like two princes warring kingdoms um, and vampires it's very similar to kingdom of battle and blood that's exactly what i felt like i was reading and especially with the smut like if you've read kingdom of battle and blood that book is very heavy on the smut. I would say it's like 90% smut, 10% plot. Like it is constant smut and that's definitely what this book was trying to do as well. I just found that the kind of smutty scenes in this book were very repetitive and I felt the same way when I read Kingdom of Battle and Blood. It started to get kind of annoying and boring and sometimes they were just in there and I was kind of like, listen, now is not the time or the place like what are you doing and yeah i don't know like it just was entertaining and i liked it and i really liked the plot twist i can't remember if it was at the end of this book or the end of this one there was a plot twist which i thought was very well done but for the most part i feel like it was kind of predictable and like i said just so like every other fantasy book i feel like this is a good blend of like several different fantasy books some of it gave me red queen vibes by victoria aveyard and like um, Elise Cova vibes and that sort of thing. But yeah, I did still enjoy them. Don't get me wrong. Like these are really fun. If you are looking for just one of those quick, easy reads that you don't have to think too much about, then this is definitely one of them. I probably will pick up the third book when it comes out because they are fairly short and they are enjoyable. But I just don't think this is like really a series that's gonna like stick in my head for long and i just had like a fun time with it but it wasn't really anything special so i did give both of these three stars and they are really really quick to read like i said i read them in like a day or so so yeah i would still recommend them if you're looking for a nice fun read then definitely check these out or if you are a fan of king of battle and blood by scarlet st Clair, then you will definitely enjoy this series but yeah i did read both of these then the next book that i did read as well was spare by prince harry i listened to this on audio and i would say the audio book is probably the best option if you're not someone who typically reads a lot of like biographies memoirs or non-fiction i typically don't read very many and i do struggle if i need to physically read them i will always go down the audio book with them because i just find them more enjoyable and entertaining so i did listen to the audio book and the main thing that i liked about this is that it's self-narrated which i definitely felt like it made it more personal it made you empathize more with what harry was talking about which i did really really like and i thought that was well done this is a ghost written book so of course it isn't all prince harry but for me personally i just really enjoyed finding out more about the life of a royal i am kind of an anti-royal I'm not into it but I wanted to read it because for one I am a bookseller it's one of the biggest publications ever like it is one of the best selling books ever and the bookstore that I work for the company it's insane how many has been sold across the company so this is a book that is definitely going to be kind of part of history and obviously a lot of people are talking about it so as a bookseller I kind of wanted to read it to kind of understand what people were talking about and also just to engage with customers about the book if they brought it up so I'm glad that I read it and I will say at times it did get boring. The middle part got a little bit boring for me. However, I do still enjoy the book itself. I think I gave it four stars, but I would say it's a low four stars. I just really, really enjoyed how he told his story and it wasn't really anything like gossipy or anything of the sort. It was really just talking about his life and what it was like to grow up in a world where his sole purpose was to be the spare. Like he was there to fulfill a role if that role became available, if anything happened to his brother. Um, and I think the way he was handled and the royal family is definitely, you know, had a really severe impact on him. And obviously losing his mother, he talks about the grief he experienced from his mother which i think a lot of people can potentially relate to if you have lost someone close to you so i did find it very interesting hearing that part and yeah i did like how as well the parts that are about megan because there isn't really much about them in there it's a very small bit at the end it was more of a love letter to megan than actually anything really about megan or them i think people need to remember this is a book that's about prince harry and not them as a couple and i just liked learning more about the world of a royal because obviously they pretty much live on a different planet so it's very very interesting but yeah please 
no like comments about oh I hate Prince Harry blah 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 because I don't care and you know everyone's entitled to their opinions and how they feel about it but obviously if you are going to be hateful um i will remove the comments because i know this is a touchy book for people but yeah that is why i personally read it and what i personally thought of it yeah i don't think the book is like perfect i did find flaws with the book but obviously as well i am slightly biased considering that i'm not a fan of the royal family so do take that in mind as well but yeah please don't leave any like hateful comments regarding it um and you know you're entitled to your opinion and that's fine like you know so just watch this part of the video and move on um i just want to say that because obviously i don't want any arguing in the comments or anything like that because it is a very touchy subject but if you do want to hear my thoughts a little bit more you can head to my reading vlog that i did um it's the same vlog that i read both of these books in as well so you can hear my thoughts about it there but yeah, I gave it like a low four stars. I did really enjoy it. I thought it was valuable in the sense of learning more about the kind of culture and it definitely made a good point about um, journalists and more so um, paparazzi than journalists. So I thought that was very, very interesting. So obviously a lot of us can't relate to that. So yeah, it was interesting to see what that's like for people to deal with. But yeah, that's generally my thoughts on it. That's how I feel. And yeah, I'm going to move on to the next book now. <laughs> So the next book that I did finish was a graphic novel and this is Donuts and Doom. I also read this during the readathon as well. This was a super fun sapphic story. It's a fantasy. I would say this is cozy fantasy. Um, we have like a coffee shop and a donut shop and we have like a witch and there's a different kind of magical element in here as well. Um, the art style as well is really, really cool. I really enjoyed the art style in this graphic novel and the story overall was just really fun and cute. It was very wholesome. It was very kind of finding yourself esque as well learning like your inner power and believing in yourself and also obviously finding like love and stuff like that it was just really really fun and entertaining and a cute little fantasy graphic novel and i did give this four stars but i would say it's like a 3.5 stars rounded up to a four it was just fun and cute and cozy and i would say if you're looking for something like that then do pick this book up because it is really really fun and i did enjoy it so i'm really glad that i read this one but i don't really have much else to say on it because it was just like a nice little wholesome graphic novel so before i get into the manga i did reread once upon a broken heart by stephanie garber so i gave this five stars of course this was a reread and this time around i decided to annotate this i thoroughly enjoyed my time rereading this book I don't know what about it it is, but I would just say this book is a perfect example of amazing storytelling. I feel like for me, when I read specific books, I'm reading the books and I'm in the world and I'm enjoying it and it's just like a good book. And then some books I read and like it makes me aware that it is actual storytelling. And to me in my head, there's a difference like in the type of book with it being either like a storytelling book or just like a book. I can't really explain it. And I don't think that will make sense to anyone, but like the way Stephanie Garber writes is like she's telling you a story and I know that's what books are but like it's different in my head to what like other books are I don't know I don't know how to really <laughs> explain how I feel but yeah this is a really good example of storytelling it's very very whimsical fairy tale esque fantasy romance and it's just a really really fun time the writing is just gorgeous. It's very lyrical and poetic at times and just really, really beautiful. And I just love the descriptions of some things in here. It was just really, really gorgeous. I also love the characters and how even though the story starts off like straight away, there's not really much kind of a build up to it. You're kind of thrown in to the main incident that kind of sets up the entire book and the plot. And even though that happens, Stephanie Garber still manages to pace the world building and character development and just the general kind of information we get given very well. Like it's all done in such a way that like the world building we are being told makes sense within the context of what's going on within this specific part of the book. And the characters you slowly get to know, but you feel like you kind of know them really well and have always known them and i don't know how she does that but i just really really love everything about this story and the world the characters the subtle romance just all of it is just so well done and yeah like i don't even really know exactly what about this book makes it so incredible but it is truly a good book like i would say this is one of those books that definitely lives up to the hype i honestly love it so much and i can't wait to read the ballad of never after i just haven't picked it up yet because 
I'm in a little bit of a slump kind of um but I will definitely be reading it soon and I'm expecting that one to be five stars as well this was just so good like honestly go and read it we follow Evangeline and Jax in this and Jax is the prince of hearts I think is what he's called and Evangeline let's just say is a key she can open any door and we have lots of other things going on there's lots of other subplots obviously romance and I would say like kind of self-love learning to be on your own without like a significant other and many other things and i just really really enjoyed this and it's just such a gorgeous book like go and read this book guys i love it so much um so yeah a definite five stars so glad i reread this and i'm excited to continue the series and then lastly we have the manga so i read nine volumes of attack on titan wait was it nine yes nine volumes of attack on titan in january so for some reason i randomly had this kind of um not feeling but i don't know what the word is i'm looking for but for some reason i had this like a feeling that i wanted to read this and i was in the bookstore and i just felt compelled to buy it so i did very very randomly on a whim it's not really a series i ever thought to read um but yeah for some reason i bought it and once i bought it i just really wanted to read it and I was very very sick in January for about a week or two and I didn't leave the house so I started reading the first volume of this and I was instantly like intrigued by like the world and just everything in here so I decided to start the anime because I can't really read when I'm ill like I don't know what it is but I just can't read I just like watching shows and stuff when I'm ill so I decided to start the anime and I binged my way through it I haven't finished it yet I'm up to I think the episode where we get introduced to the other characters i'll say that i'm not going to give any spoilers um and it's like very sudden and at first i was like hang on am i still even watching the same show like did i miss an episode um so i'm up to that part if you know then you know so i'm a good few seasons in i'm way ahead in the anime now than the manga but as a result it made me want to read the manga so i did get through the first nine volumes and then i'm currently reading a volume 11 um so yeah i really really enjoyed all of these i haven't rated any of them five stars um i rated all of them four stars but they're like 4.75 stars i just don't want to give any of them five stars because i know somewhere in this series there will be one specific volume that is just an absolute five stars like it's so much better than the rest of the volumes and that'll be the one that i'll give five stars but they are still five star reads in themselves if that makes sense it's just the way i've rated them on goodreads so obviously there is three volumes in each of these omnibuses so obviously volumes one to three volumes four to six and volume seven to nine so i did read all nine and i just really really enjoyed this it's very hard to explain what this series is about without giving spoilers but it's basically humans versus titans it can be gruesome it's got very dark themes it even has themes of like oppression, racism, morality and just lots of other kind of different themes and some of them can be quite dark and like I said this can be very gruesome. It's also very very like emotional is not the word I'm looking for but it is emotional but like it really does like toy with your feelings and it's full of tension um, and it's just a really really incredibly well written manga like honestly the plot twists in this manga are insane and the animation itself is incredible it, like the anime is just so good um, and just like the story the world and the characters are also complex it's just a really 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 good anime and manga and I would definitely recommend it like I get the hype about it now like I get why everyone says it's one of the best of all time because it truly is like it's so well done and even the art style in here is just so good especially of like the titans like I just love it like honestly go and pick this series up if you were even slightly debating it I would definitely recommend it because I never ever thought in a million years I would read this series and I'm so glad that I have um and I'm obsessed and I want to be Levi Ackerman's wife so yeah 10 out of 10 would recommend um, I'm very very happy that I did get to them and as a result of reading Attack on Titan I am very much back in my manga era I've been watching a ton of anime like I have flown through so many animes in the past month it is ridiculous and at the moment like when I said earlier that I was in a reading slump I'm not in like a actual reading slump I'm just in a I only want to read manga slump 
So that's kind of what I'm doing at the moment. And I'm going to film a vlog where I read as many manga as I can in 24 hours. So if you are interested in that, keep an eye out for it because it's coming soon. But yes, anyways, these are all the books that I did manage to read in January. I'm glad that I've started the year off strong and that I did have some five star reads and some really, really good series that I've been introduced to. I had so much fun reading all of these books. I'm excited to continue on with some of the series like Attack on Titan and read The Ballad of Never After. So yeah, depending on how my reading goes in February, I may also do a February wrap up. I may try and keep doing wrap ups every month or sometimes I might do like a joint monthly wrap up. So maybe I'll do like a February, March wrap up together. I'm not really sure. Um, let me know in the comments if you do enjoy wrap ups and you want me to keep doing them. Because like I said, I'm kind of out of practice with these and I typically haven't ever kept up with doing wrap ups and I just don't know if I should. So let me know if you would be interested in seeing those from me on a monthly basis. If you have read any of the books I talked about, please do let me know what you thought of them and what you rated them. I absolutely love chatting to you guys in the comments about all the books. And of course, leave me any recommendations for books that you think I would really enjoy or that you want to see me read in my vlogs. And let me know what your favourite books of January were in the comments because I would love to know what everyone else has been reading recently. I will have all of my social media linked in the description box down below along with the link to my Patreon and that's where you're going to find extra content from me such as buddy reads, the monthly readathon so I read a lot of these books during, Discord, live shows, extra videos and so much more. It's all on my Patreon. So if you're interested in any of that then check that out in the description box and leave a purple heart emoji in the comments if you did make it to the end of this video. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're all safe and well. I hope you're reading lots of good books and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!